Hey, we are back in the field house. Charlie Chitwood joined by Jarrett Von Rosenberg, who's big cats. What a game. That was a bar fight, Coach. Yeah, no, it was. They're good. I mean, I, we, we talked about it before. They're, uh, you know, they uh, look at, we got Clayshawn Gaffney. Uh, surrounded by the entire surrounded village. Surrounded by the entire, uh, I think, the high school team, uh, junior high team that came. Um, no, they're, they're so well coached. Coach Morgan does a great job. Uh, Ray Woods, the assistant there, has been there a long time. Um, they got those guys running their system and, and, and you know, and, and it's early for them too in the season uh, as well. Um, but you know they gave us all. You know we, we uh, some shots got thrown in uh, towards the end there, um, which was uh, exciting for us. Hey, we got to share this. Clayshawn's over there, surrounded by Clarksville kids, taking selfies with the whole mob. They're making noise. This is kind of the beauty of the college game, too, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's pretty neat. Uh, our administration, community, and school did a great job with today, Education Day. Um, obviously, some of the kids had to leave, but we still had a great crowd for a 2:30 tip, um, and there was some other uh, young uh, teams coming. So um, this is a big staple for us. Uh, it's been a really good experience for our players, for the community and then obviously for the kids around the, the area, getting to know our guys and, uh, you know, that hopefully keeps them coming back to more and more games. I know. Some of them get a little bit taller. They get the Clayshawn size, and you'll really <laughs> want to meet them, right? Exactly, exactly. All right, back to the game. This one, Coach, the first numbers that jump out for anybody, 23 lead changes and 10 ties. Most of that occurred in the first half. But just back and forth, that's got to make you want to pull hair out. Yeah, you know, the game really changed. There's a bunch of 50, we call them 50-50 balls that tipped or weird stuff. Like, you know, two guys get a hand on it, and it's kind of a scrum. Um, we It seemed like, you know, and I don't ever say too much that I watch the film, but it seemed like we lost all those in the first half. Um, and then we're right there in the end, we had some plays down here where we didn't run great offense and the balls got deflected, but we won those plays. We got some t offense rebound tips, won those plays, got to the foul line. And that that was really where I thought we, we took off when we started winning those 50-50 plays. And, um, you know, I, that, I think – uh, offensively, that's the best half of basketball we've played. Um, and, and I told our guys, it's not just a, some shots went in. I got, that's, um, but we were so stagnant in the first half, and you know, you know, it's 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 an evolving process that we're going through. Um, but when we're, we we have movement and stuff, this is why you see a statue with 19, 13, 14, 12, 9, 18, 2, and seven points. That's what our offense is supposed to be when the ball is moving around. Because we don't care, we shouldn't care who's getting the shot. But if you let the defense dictate where the shot comes from, that's what it looks like. Tell you what, uh, the defense set up some three pointers in the second half. Augustine Na and Jairus Roberson started connecting on theirs but clay sean gaffney inside was a man yeah no he was he was really good five block shots he deflected no telling how many others you'll have to tell me after you've seen the film and if he had made that last free throw he would have tied his career best as a lion with 20 points he ended up with 19 no shade on him though today yeah you know and, and he'll, well, he'll uh you know his his direct matchup was 21 and then uh that guy didn't have too shabby a night either, but they battled. That was that was two really good big men playing tonight on the floor that the, the fans got to see. Demarcus Demonia, a solid evening, 14 points, six boards. Um, he's – I don't want to say he struggled, but this was one of his better games in the first four that count. Yeah, it, you know, uh, again, like you cannot live on results. The four threes he shot in the first half were incredible. They, they were great shots. Good looks. They're on plan. That's what we want to do. We got two feet in the paint, kicked out to them. We got to just jump up and shoot them. Um, and that way we got to play with confidence that we're not worried about. It. That's the right shot. Everyone knows it's the right shot, and let's go to the next play. Um, so, you know, I, he, once he got past worrying about that, I th thought, he, thought he did really good. He had a really nice second half. What does a game like this, uh, and, and this is a different kind of team that you had to face compared to some of the others, but what does it do for your guys going forward to the match Thursday night against Dallas Baptist? It just, you know, just playing games prepares us. Uh, you know, we, we've played different teams um, from a standpoint of size, little guards, big guards, Division One. Like, we've played a lot of different teams. So, like, our, our team feeling out what's successful no matter what, no matter who you're playing. That's the – let's get let's get to the point where we are going to be successful no matter what the uh, opponent is, and it's really about ourselves. So, um, you know, I, I was joking. It's like a Sam Walker basketball team. Just come out and score 60 in the second half. It was like we were pressing the whole game and making it a – uh, a track meet um, but 
uh, credit to them uh, again. They really made us uh, earn it, and um, we were able to get the, the job done. Carson Tuttle uh, battled his way to seven assists along with 13 points, and they thought that he was the guy to put at the foul line there late in the game when they were trying anything, and he dropped in six out of six, cool as a cucumber. Yeah, and that, that kept the game where it needed to be, um, obviously, take a little stress off of my life. Um, but, you know, again, like some of those 50-50, we get a deflection, uh, and it looks like a turnover, and the guy bounces it underneath Jairus' legs to a man in the corner, and he makes a three. And it's like, uh, I bet you can't do that again if you try to. Not, even, not even in practice. You know, so like, you know, some of those plays didn't go our way to the end that, 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 that kept them where we had to really, you know, make those free throws. But credit to our guys. They got the job done. And, you know, Carson stepped up and hit those and, and really kept it out of reach. One of some of the things that jumped out at you first, uh, you always see the game a little differently and from the other angle. Well, when we get deflections, we're good. We're the, we're the best team in the country in transition. Number one team in the country at all levels in transition. Um, and you see why. Uh, you got guys that, that we want to shoot it first pass if their feet are set. And then you got three, four, five guys that can, that can go catch it, uh, go get the ball at the rim at any time. Um, and that puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Um, but we have to get deflections and, and create turnovers. We were able to create 19 of them tonight. That's how you, that's why you score so many points. Um, but so we got we got to continue to do better at that. And then, um, you know, for, for whatever reason, you know, again, we always talk about it. If I had the actual reasons to, you know, how to build a championship team and like, you know, I, I uh, as Chris Beard said in his press conference, I'd sell it and, and retire, um, sell that information. But uh, we've got to figure out how to be a championship team all the time. You, you see spurts of, of us looking like we're really put together and we're, we know what we're doing on both sides of the floor. And then you have, you know, 10 to 15, 20 possessions where it looks like we haven't practiced in a month, right? And that, like, we got to – we just can't have them. Like, you know, and it's different guys. It's not the same guy making the same mistakes. You know, he'll forget some. He'll forget some or, you know, make a boneheaded play that's not on plan. Um, but that's part of it. That's part of this journey. Uh uh, again, I know we're in December, but to us, it's the fourth game of the year. So, you know, we're early in this November season. Um, and I told our guys we're going to really grow up. And now it's now 13 days. But like this is like this is going to determine what type of team we are this next 13 days, right? And, and wins and losses are obviously part of it. That's what, that's why we have a scoreboard. But you know, how are we going to approach success, failure, show up the next day when it's not easy because we got so many games and so many days? Um, how do we handle injuries? New guy, like how do we handle this next two weeks is going to really determine, and we'll know a lot about us going into Christmas, just a lot about who we are. You know, I was going to ask what what did you think about this squad after the first month of the season, November? Not regardless of how many games, yeah. but you said it up it's really they're set up well going into this crucial stretch but the crucial stretch is going to be the one that really tells all yeah no i mean you know tomorrow's an off day because the the, the, the rules so we'll have short prep for uh dbu but we'll be ready i mean the guys were ready um take care of their bodies uh we got to get locked in on uh wednesday uh we'll travel down to dallas uh and you know practice over there shoot around over there and then and we got to find a way to go one row. i mean at the end of the day it's you know the, the weird thing about this is they're they're non-conference games yes but but we know who they are. <laughs> if you know what that means, if you can explain that to me, uh, uh, let me know what that means. But um, they're regional, just like the, that's why this game is so big, just like the Dallas Babs game is so big. It's like you D2 regional games, and, you know, you're trying to win them all. That's right. One at a time. <laughs> and GAC's not in our region, but they're next door, and that's why they count. No, right? they're in region, yep. They're in region. I thought they were just there last if, year. Did they switch it? No, it's – it, it counts as an in-region win if it's in a bordering state. Right. Oh, the state, so, not yeah. the region. So it, okay. they're not in our or region. Conference. They're considered an in-region game. Got it. Another D2 thing. Uh, I know. we got to learn all this stuff all the time. Yeah. Coach, an exciting game, a thriller. What a finish in the second half. Was it, was it, was it pretty entertaining? Was I, it, some, was. it was. There's some dunks and threes yeah, that yeah, you guys yeah, like. Yeah, I, did. I probably made a mess in front <laughs> throwing papers. but Yeah, holy. that Clayshawn Gaffney dunk uh, was pretty impressive. I don't even think he was throwing it to Clayshawn. I think he was throwing it to DeMarcus. And Clay was right behind him, so we ended up two See, people. That. Two people could have dunked that. <laughs> Is there? I know that a dunk's a dunk's a dunk, and you got guys that like to dunk. When they miss a dunk, does a coach say he just missed a shot, or does he say, "Man, I wish he did not missed a dunk"? Uh, I, don't know. I mean, because the there's style points I'd in miss, there. Sometimes. I'd be as mad if you miss a layup as a dunk, and all right, yeah. Well, if you miss a, if you try to do something 
crazy. Yeah, like a windmill. Like a windmill or something you missed. Yeah, you're coming to the bench. Oh, okay. But you know, if you just you go make a play and and, and try to try to dunk it, because we say if you lay it up, like in our league, if you you're playing against Clayshawn Gaffney's, you, you you just try to lay it up. It ain't gonna work. No, uh, you know, other teams are seeing that. Um, so uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out, uh, go back and watch the film, try to get a little bit better next time we get on the floor. All right. Well, that next time will be on Thursday, 7 o'clock tip in Dallas at the Berg Center on the campus of Dallas Baptist. And the men are going to be in a Donnybrook over there with old Blake Flickner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Blake, uh, you know, I haven't really div- uh, dr- uh, dove into them. Can't speak. Um, but, you know, they do such a good job. I, I Coach Flickner's uh, been doing it a long time and won a lot of games, and uh, they'll be well prepared. It's really hard to win in the Berg Center, so uh, we got to get get our minds right and uh, get ready to go. All right, Coach, thank you so much. Congratulations again. That was a fun one. You got it. Go Lions. Thanks again to our administration, our uh, university, and, and all the local school districts that uh, came out and supported this, uh, this event today. Go all Lions. Right. All right, that's Jared Von Rosenberg. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for the double dip today. Lion women won 158. The men Men go off and separate from Harding U in a tight one and win 94 to 83. And that will be all for this one.